Many of the remaining problems here in section 6.3 on Achieve take a little bit more time to work, but that's because they're more fun problems. Uh, now, the problems 15, uh, and in fact, the, the next several problems, most of you will have a very similar looking picture to me. Uh, it's just that your A and B will be different in the problem. So I have in this one, and by A and B, I mean lowercase a and b, the region a and b will be fairly similar. It says, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating region a in that figure that they've drawn uh, about y equals 3. Okay, so when I was thinking about that, I could say my, my function here is x squared plus uh, lowercase b, which is their x squared plus 3. So that means the region A starts at the ordered pair 0, 3. It has a y-intercept of 3. And then it goes until A, which is 9. Uh, well, for mine, that would be 9 squared plus 3 is 84. So the region that I'm trying to rotate is this region right here. It's bounded by the line y equals 84. That would be the blue line at the very top of the region. Uh, and its bottom is at y equals 3, the 0 squared plus 3. Uh, so it's this curve right here, and I'm trying to revolve it about the axis of revolution of y equals 3. Okay, so in order to do that, I already know that anytime I'm revolving about a horizontal axis, the thickness of each of my slices has to be uh, a horizontal change, and it is a change in x. In this rotation, I'm going to have an inside radius that I'm going to have to hollow out from the larger radius resulting uh, circles. So I have R1 and an R2. Well, R1, the distance from the axis of revolution to the inside curve. Well, that's just x squared plus 3 minus 3. So you'd say, well, then it's just x squared. Yes. So you'll see I have the inside radius of x squared here. The outside radius, well, what's the larger radius? It's from the axis of revolution to the top of your region, which the top of your region is y equals 84. 84 minus 3 means that my outside radius has a constant length, no matter if I'm at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period, it has a constant length of 81. That's why you'll see that here. So the volume of one arbitrary slice is the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared, all times pi and delta x to get to the volume. Well, 81 squared gave me 65, 61 minus x to the fourth. Now we have to integrate this function from where the slices would begin at x equals zero to where they would end at x equals nine. So we integrate this function from 0 to 9. Power rule tells us that that'll be 65, 61x minus x to the fifth over 5 evaluated from 0 to 9. Of course, we still have times our pi. Uh, when I evaluated this at 9, uh, I had 65, 61 times 9 minus 9 to the fifth over 5. And I think this is one of those scenarios where uh, I, I, I preferred to go ahead and keep it inside of a fraction. So my fraction was 236,196 over 5 times pi. Uh, probably could put a decimal because the decimal uh, would be a 0.2, which is still an exact answer. No matter what, it's wanting you to put an exact answer. So I'll say, well, my 2,300 and, sorry, 236,196, I'll go ahead and put that in here, 236,196, and it was that times pi, and my denominator here was just a 5. This should be precisely what they're looking for, we'll check that, and it is. For my next question, it's a very similar looking, in fact, the same looking region. They're changing the A and the B. And they're changing the axis of revolution. So here I'm revolving about Y equals negative 1. Again, that's going to be a horizontal line. It's just a horizontal line further down. And this time, B is equal to 5. So that means that's the function X squared plus 5 for me, starting at 0, 5. And my A is still going to 9. So 
The last point here where that would be in my region would be nine squared plus five, 81 plus five, 86. So my region's going from the ordered pair zero five up to 986. So that top line, and I have to find that top height, so I know that that blue line has the equation y equals 86 up here. Now it's pretty similar type of problem, except instead of revolving about y equals three, I'm revolving about y equals negative one. So you'd say, well, once again, what's your outside radius that you're going to start with? Goes from negative one to 86. That's a distance of 87. So I have pi times the larger radius squared, now minus the smaller radius squared. Well, what's your smaller radius? We know that this has a height of x squared plus five. So if you say top minus bottom, x squared plus five minus a negative one gives me x squared plus six. So this is my larger radius. This is my smaller radius. I have pi times the group r2 squared minus r1 squared. Uh, I foil out that second one to get x to the fourth plus 12x squared plus 36. That's all being subtracted from 87 squared, which was 7569, simplifies to this function. So now I have pi times negative x to the fourth minus 12x to the second plus 7533 all times delta x. That's the volume of one slice. I need to know the volume of the entire rotated solid. So I go in and I integrate from where the region begins to where it ends. Again, zero to nine. So I'm integrating from zero to nine of this function with respect to x. Power rule gives me this. When I evaluate at nine, it simplifies to this fraction, very similar to my last answer. Uh, so I'm getting 20, uh, sorry, 265,356. I'll minimize this to type that in. It was 265,356, and that was times pi. And all of that was divided by five. We'll check that answer. Should be good, and it is. For the next question here, and it's a very similar looking question. So if you can do one of these, you can do all of these. Uh, now, in this one, I'm looking at the function, let me bring this up here, there we go, trying to make it clear. Uh, I'm looking at the function y is equal to x squared plus 6 uh, because my b value is 6 in this problem, so it went from 3 to 5, now to 6. I'm starting at the ordered pair 0, 6, but my b value, sorry, my a value in this problem is also 6, so I'm only going up until x is equal to 6. I plug a six into this uh, function, I'm gonna get six squared plus six, that gives me 42. So I'm going from zero six to 642, meaning the blue line on top of this region is gonna be y equals 42. Now, in order to evaluate this region, I'll go in and say, well, all right, I know if I'm gonna revolve this about this time, a vertical axis of revolution, then all of the, my slices are going to have a vertical height. That it's going to be some change in y. Now, in order to find out what each of those slices have a volume formula of, I'd say, well, I need to find the area of the face times that thickness for the volume of the slice. The area of the face is going to be pi times the larger radius squared minus pi times the smaller radius squared. I just factor out a pi that larger radius, you're gonna to have to give me in terms of uh, y. So you say, well, okay, the larger radius is gonna go from the axis of revolution to the curve, y is equal to x squared plus six. I had to go in and say, well, y is equal to x squared plus six. If I solve for x, I know y minus six is x squared. X is gonna equal the square root of y minus six. So I can say, this is the square root of y minus six and I'm subtracting from that a negative three. That's where this came, comes from. The larger radius is that square root of y minus six plus three. Remember, minus a negative three is plus three. So now we need to go in and say, 
Well, what's the smaller radius? The smaller radius is always the distance from the axis of revolution to the beginning of your region that's getting revolved around. The, this region always begins at the y-axis. So you can just say, well, then that's just going to be a distance of 3 there. So you'll see I have the outer radius squared minus the inside radius squared, the inside radius being that 3 squared there. Now, whenever I try to evaluate this, and I'll uh, go in and say, well, I know that that first group, if I square it out, I'd have the square root of y minus 6 times the square root of y minus 6, which is just y minus 6. Then I would have plus 3 on the root of y minus 6 plus another 3 on the root of y minus 6 for plus 6 on the root of y minus 6. Then I would have plus 9. I didn't bother to put it because I'd just be subtracting 9 right here. So I just get these terms right here for the inside algebra simplification. This is the volume of the slice, the pi times this relation in terms of y times delta y. Now, we know that we can find the volume of the entire rotated solid by summing up all of these from where they would begin to where they would end in terms of y. I could see somebody making a mistake and thinking, well, hey, don't I integrate from 0 to 6? No, you do not. This is in terms of y, so you have to say in terms of y, where does the region begin? It begins at y equals 6, it, be, it ends at y equals 42. So I say pi times the integral 6 to 42 of my relation with respect to y. I integrate by just using the power rule, y squared over 2 minus 6y. This group to the 1 half power becomes the group to the 3 over 2 power. 6 times 2 thirds gave me a 4 out in front of that group. Now it's just a matter of evaluating this expression at 42. When I did, I got the 1,494. And then subtracting from that, when we evaluate this expression at 6, when I did that, I got a negative 18. Well, 1,494 minus a negative 18 is going to give me uh, 1,512. And then we multiply that answer by pi. I'll come in here and say it should be 1512 times pi. We check that answer. Yes. For number 18, we have another similar problem, except this time we're looking at region B, where it's the region beneath the curve of x squared plus b, where b is 4 in my problem. And this is going from the interval 0 to a, which is 0 to my a value is 6 here. So I went ahead and graphed x squared plus 4 from 0 to 6. I know at that at 6, the y value is going to be 6 squared plus 4. It's going to be 640. So I'm looking to rotate the region beneath this curve from 0 to 6. I went ahead and enclosed in that region. And I'm looking to uh, rotate it about the line y equals 40 which is the very tip top of my curve. Y equals 40 would be a horizontal line at uh, 40, which the very top of my curve at X equals 6 touches that axis of revolution. Now, if I want to rotate this region about that axis of revolution and try to find the volume of the solid of revolution, then what I'm going to have to do here is to say, well, I know that most of the region is disconnected from the axis of revolution, so I'm going to have to hollow out a portion. I'm going to have to find the larger radius and the smaller radius. Well, the larger radius, R2, it's just the distance from y equals 40 down to the bottom of my region, which the bottom of my region is the x-axis. That distance is always 40. So you'll see for R2, I just said, well, R2 is simply 40. Now my inner radius, the smaller radius, it's the distance from the axis of revolution, y equals 40. And the top curve, well, that top curve is your function x squared plus 4. So notice 40 minus the group x squared plus 4 yields 36 minus x squared. Okay, so now the volume of any arbitrary slice, I draw out one such slice right here, the volume of that slice would be pi times the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared times the thickness of the slice. And I had to kind of squeeze that in here because I forgot it to begin with. But the thickness of the slice, these slices have to be vertical slices with a horizontal width. 
some change in the x-axis for the width. Uh, I carried out the algebra here, 40 squared, 1600, minus the group 1,296, minus 72 x squared, plus x to the fourth. Uh, this simplified to be this algebraic expression. So now this is the volume of one slice. I need to find the volume of the entire rotated solid, which would sum up all of the volume of these slice formulas from where they begin in terms of x to where they end in terms of x. And in this case, that's from 0 to 6. So I integrate from 0 to 6 of my volume function. I just use the power rule. Uh, and then when I get this answer after using the power rule, I evaluate that at 6. And I got a decimal answer, and it, it's okay to leave this one in a decimal answer. Uh, you could convert it to a fraction, uh, but since 0.8 is an ending decimal, I just left it as that. And I've already entered that answer in here this time. I had the 5,452.8 pi. I'll go on to the next question. The next question, number 19, you'll see I've already answered it as well, but let me talk about the work and how I got to it. Uh, so we have this figure. Again, we're interested in the region B, the region beneath that curve. Uh, and my uh, x squared plus 3, in this case, is my problem. The B value that they wanted was 3. Uh, and this is on the interval from 0 to 9. Well, I went ahead and graphed out my curve, y equals x squared plus 3 from 0 to 9 starts at 0, 03, ends at 984. So my region is the portion under this curve right here. Now, what are we revolving that region about? Well, it says you're revolving about the vertical line x equals 9. x equals 9 connects with the very end of this region that we're rotating, and it's going to rotate around that line 9. And I kind of think of it as it's, it's going to form kind of like a circus tent. Uh, whenever it goes around there. We're looking for the volume inside of that circus tent like looking figure. Okay, in order to do that, I would have to take an arbitrary slice of that region. I know every arbitrary slice of that region, the radius is going to be from the axis of revolution to the curve. And then it's going to rotate around and each of those uh, slices is going to have a thickness with respect to y. So I should have put a delta y right there for the thickness of the slice. Uh, the slice, uh, but the radius of the slice is going to go from the axis of revolution to the curve. I need that curve in, ter in terms of y. So I take my function in terms of x and solve it x in terms of y. y minus 3 is equal to x squared, so x is equal to the positive root of y minus 3. And we know it's the positive root because these are positive values of x. So I can say, okay, x is equal to the positive root of y minus 3. That's my curve. A lot of students would confuse that with your radius. It is not your radius. Keep in mind, your radius, it's the distance from the curve to this axis of revolution. The axis of revolution is to the right of my curve. So I say right minus left. This radius r is going to be 9 minus the square root of y minus 3. That's where I tried to find this up here. I said the volume of the slice. Uh, now, I had to break this into two regions, so let me talk about this right here. For y equals 0 to 3, my function isn't up there. I know I'm going to have to integrate this with respect to y because my thickness is with respect to y. For these values up here, the r value is going to be the axis of revolution minus the curve. For these very bottom y values from 0 to 3, the radius goes directly from the axis of revolution all the way back to the y-axis, so it's a length of 9. So that's why you see for the y values between 0 and 3, my radial length is 9, so the volume of the slice is going to be pi r squared delta y. That's just going to be 81 pi delta y. But now, for the vast majority of the region, the region between 3 and 84, from y equals 3 to 84, your radial length is going to be 9, not minus 0, but minus this function, which is the square, the square root of y minus 3. So I have pi r squared delta y again, where r is 9 minus the square root of y minus 3. I square out that group to get to this. 
I simplify that expression to get the volume for the slice for the regions between 3 and 84 is going to be pi times 78 plus y minus 18. And I wanted to go ahead and write that as the group y minus 3 to the 1 half so I could use the power rule more easily when I integrate. All right. So I have two volume formulas. First of all, from 0 to 3 and then from 3 to 84. So whenever I try to find the entire volume of this rotated solid, I say it has to start from where Y begins to where Y ends, from zero to 84. I had to break that into two separate integrals. From zero to three, I'm just gonna be summing this volume formula, 81 dy from zero to three, and then I'll say plus pi times, this is my R squared simplified formula for the second part times dy, from 3 to 84. We integrate both of them. The first one we get 81y from 0 to 3. The second one after using the power rule you get 78y plus 1 half y squared. And this one would be minus 18y minus 3 to the 3 over 2 power. That 18 then gets multiplied by 2 thirds to give me a 12. Uh, so now we evaluate uh, these. Of course, the first one's easy. It's just 81 times 3, you get 243 times pi. The second one, you're going to have to worry about the upper and lower limit of integration. When I plugged in 84 into this expression, I got 1,332. When I plugged a 3 into that expression, I got 477 over 2. So my answer was 1,332 plus 243 minus 477 over 2, simplified that, multiplied it by pi, I had 1,336.5 pi, and I believe I already entered that in here, I did, uh, and that was the correct answer. Now, moving on to the next one, and this one I actually got wrong the first time, let me uh, talk about why, uh, so I went in and this be my attempt two. My attempt one was wrong, because, ah, here I go, uh, because whenever I was simplifying out my problem, I forgot a term. I'll, I'll talk about that when we get there. But this is a gorgeous problem. And we finally get away from that region A and region B. In this one, I'm given the function 56 minus x and the function y equals x squared. I'm supposed to find the region enclosed by that and greater than x is equal to zero. So it's this region right here. Uh, I had to find the boundary point. I set the linear function equal to the quadratic. That ended up giving me x squared plus x minus 56. I factored that. Factors of negative 56 that sum to get to one. I said, well, negative seven and positive eight. That gave me values of x where these curves are equal at seven and at negative eight. I didn't even worry about the negative eight. I could care less where they cross to the left of uh, x equals zero. I only care that they cross at seven. So I plugged seven into both of the functions. 56 minus seven is 49, and of course seven squared is 49. So they're gonna meet at the ordered pair 749. Now, this is the region that I'm trying to rotate. I'm trying to rotate it about the line, y, the horizontal line, I should say, y equals negative 8. So whenever you're thinking about what that's going to result in, keep in mind this, this region is going to come out towards you into the paper and then back around. It's going to be a region that looks like this. This is one cross section. If I took a very thin slice of the overall volume, it would look like this where the center of this rotation is at y equals negative 8. Now, my inside radius is going to be from negative 8 to the curve that's closer. You'll see I drew it right here. Well, that's going to be x squared minus a negative 8. That's going to be x squared plus 8. The larger radius is going to go from the axis of revolution, negative 8, to the outer curve, which is going to be 56 minus x. So that gives me 56 minus x minus a negative 8, which is just going to be plus 8, you'll get that the larger radius is 64 minus x. So now I go in and I say, well, what's the volume of this arbitrary slice? Well, it's going to be pi times the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared. Each of those I had to square out. I did that right here. And then you can say, well, okay, at that point, you needed to simplify. And 
here's where I made my mistake, and you might be able to see it a little bit. Uh, well, you definitely can see it because now my function is no longer in descending power. I tried to collect like terms and simplify. What I did is I just forgot the minus 128x from this step to this step. So I used some whiteout and stuck in the minus 128x there, delta x, and that's why the 128x and the minus 64x squared are at the end of these two groups, just because initially I had forgotten that from this step to this step. So just be careful with that. Here's our volume of the slice formula. I take that, plug it into my integral, and I can say, well, I don't want to find the volume of one arbitrary slice. I want to find the volume of the entire rotated region, which begins at x equals 0 and ends at x equals 7. So I integrate from 0 to 7 of my volume formula with respect to x, use the power rule on each of those terms, evaluate it at 7, and we get to this answer. Should be correct now that I put the 128x in there and integrated it correctly. I'll get the 20,000. O eleven point six ooh ooh twenty thousand zero one one point six and then I need the pi so I plug that pi in there right there we check this answer and the chief says good but it has to remind you oh it took you two attempts to get it thanks chief but it still gives you hundred percent credit uh, for the next problem here. My work on it is right here. Let me make this a little bit larger so we can see, or lift it up so you can see more of it. For 21, uh, I had a problem almost identical to this in my notes. Uh, we have y is equal to 2 on the root of x and y equals x. Uh, those two curves are going to have the intersection at 0, 0. And again, I found at 4, 4 over here. To see where I found that, I just set one function equal to the other. Uh, now, whenever I did that, uh, what I did is I said, uh, if I'm trying to revolve, and, and I already knew in this problem, it was asking me to revolve the region obtained and closed between these two curves about x equals negative 2. Since I had to revolve about a vertical axis, I knew I wanted both of these functions in terms of y, not in terms of x. That's an explanation of what I did here in the very beginning of this problem. I knew I needed it in terms of y. This is easily x, x is equal to y. So I went ahead and drew it out. I knew that the square root function was going to be on top of the linear function in this region. You could have went ahead and found your endpoints uh, in the very beginning before you even put them into terms of y. I'll go ahead and put it into terms of y over here and say, well, if y is equal to 2 on the root of x, then 1 half y is equal to the root of x. And then if I square both sides, 1 fourth y squared is equal to x. So then what I did is I said, oh, I need to find the values of y which, uh, which these two curves are equal. I set 1 fourth y squared equal to y, got the y's all on one side, factored out a 1 fourth y, that left me y minus 4. So then using the zero product property, you set each factor equal to zero. 1 fourth y is equal to 0 when y is 0. y minus 4 is equal to 0 when y is equal to 4. So I knew that these two curves intersected at y equals 0 and y equals 4. And of course, since x is equal to y, it's at 0, 0 and at 4, 4. Now, I'm trying to take the region that's enclosed between these two curves and rotate it about the vertical line, x is equal to negative 2. So it's going to come out, go back in. I know that as those rotate around, one slice of that region is going to look like this. Each of those slices are going to have a thickness with respect to y. And I know that the center of the rotation is at that axis, x equals negative 2. So if I try to find r1, r1 is the distance from the axis of rotation to the inside curve. That's going to be, and I would just think of it as right minus left. Well, what's this curve? That's my square root function. It has the formula 1 fourth y squared. So I can say, well, that's 1 fourth y squared minus a negative 2, which is 1 fourth y squared plus 2. The other curve is just x is equal to y. So I get y minus a negative 2 is y plus 2. So I have my outer and inner radius. 
the volume of the slice is the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared times the change in y. Then I'll, all I've done from this step to this step, square out each of those groups, collect any like terms, simplify it out, I get to this algebraic expression. So the volume of a slice is pi times negative 1 16th y to the fourth plus 4y, and that's times the thickness delta y. That's the volume of one slice. We need the volume of the entire rotated solid. So I would sum all of these slices starting at y equals zero, ending at y equals four. So volume is gonna be pi on the integral from zero to four of my formula here integrated with respect to y. Power rule on each of those terms gives me pi times negative y to the fifth over 80 plus two y squared. I'm evaluating that from zero to four. The only answer you need is the one evaluated at four. When I did that, I got 96 over five. Uh, multiply by pi, we'll get our 96 pi over five. I'll go ahead and put that in as an answer. 96 pi, and we're dividing by five. Check that answer, and it should be good. And it is. Last question here in this section, number 22. Here's my work for 22. It wasn't too long of a problem to be the last one in the section. Uh, again, you're told that x is greater than zero, uh, and you want to find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region enclosed between x to the 13th and x to the 1 13th. Okay, and you're rotating these, uh, let's see, rotating the region enclosed about the y-axis. Okay, so since I'm rotating about a vertical axis, I know I need these in terms of y. First thing I did though, is I went ahead and graphed them like this. I know y is equal to x to the 13th, that's going to be low in this region, and then it's gonna start rising very rapidly. But I know at, that at one, the y value is one. So I'm gonna have zero, zero, and one, one, and it's gonna look like this in that region. On the other hand, any root, like this is the 13th root, it starts rising rapidly and then it really flattens off dramatically after that. So x to the 1 13th power is going to be the higher function in this region. But again, at 0, the y value is 0. And at 1, the y value is 1. So I have a very easy region as far as its boundary points. And I know that the x to the 1 13th is my top function. But again, since I'm re re rotating about a vertical axis of revolution, I know that each cross section is gonna have a change of y for its thickness, which means I need to get these functions in terms of y. x to the 13th gives me x is equal to y to the 1 13th. And similarly, if I raise both sides to the 13th power here, I would get x is equal to y to the 13th. So please be very careful in understanding what your top and bottom function are. This one would have been the function y is equal to x to the 13th. Well, that's the same thing as x is equal to y to the 1 13th. Similarly, my top function would have been the y is equal to x to the 1 13th. Well, then now in terms of uh, y, it's x is equal to y to the 13th. Now I need to find my inside radius and my outside radius. Well, the outside radius is just the distance from the axis of revolution to the curve furthest away. Well, that distance is given by y to the 1 13th power. The inside radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to the inside curve. Well, that inside curve is y to the 13th. y to the 13th minus zero gives me an inside radius of y to the 13th. So please notice now, volume of the slice is going to be pi times the larger radius squared minus the smaller radius squared. y to the 1 13th squared gives me y to the 2 thirteenths. y to the 13th squared gives me y to the 26th. So now I'm going to integrate this from where it starts in terms of y to where it ends in terms of y, 0 to 1, of y to the 2 thirteenths minus y to the 26th. When I integrate the first one, I have to add one to that exponent. That's gonna be plus 13 over 13, gave me y to the 15 thirteenths power. You multiply by the reciprocal of that new power, 13 fifteenths y to the 15 thirteenths. The second term, much easier, you just get y to the 27th divided by 27. I called it minus one over 27 y to the seventh. 
Now when we evaluate this from zero to one, again, as in most cases, you can ignore the zero and just say, well, when we evaluate it at one, we're gonna get 13 over 15 minus one over 27. And when you simplify that fraction down, you get 112 over 135. Uh, so our final answer here should be 112 pi, 112 pi divided by 135. That should be our final answer. We'll check this. Absolutely. And notice, despite me making a silly error on one of the problems in this section, again, if you just get it right eventually, you'll get 100% no matter what. You have infinite attempts on any problem uh, with no penalty. All right, guys, hopefully that helps out with this section. Uh, please give each problem a try and let me know if you run into any problems.